<laughs> I like this term. I call it the cosmic mulcher. That's my word. I came up with it. I'm going to patent it. And, the, and, and, and what I mean by that is it feels like in life, because we have an ego, the consciousness has assumed an individual form. And for that to happen, it needs ego, it needs mind, it needs emotional body, it needs physical body, it needs all these things, right? To, to give the 3D game its appearance of reality. <clears throat> so at the same time though, so there's two forces, right? There's the ego negative force that drives us into delusion and sense pleasure and sense stimulation and trying to find peace on, in the <clears throat> 3D world. But then there's the higher level, you can say spiritual force, that's trying to, even in the midst of having the, the 3D headset on, keeps encouraging us, bringing our attention inside so the consciousness realizes itself. Like the consciousness projected out and now, and, and there's energy that tries to make that continuous, you know, to be projected out. But then there's also an energy that's, that's trying to reverse this, this energy to go back inside to where the consciousness just realizes it's consciousness. Okay. So life, based on laws of karma and all kinds of things, it's like designed <clears throat> to keep like, it never ends this duality. The ego is gonna come with something. It doesn't stop. It comes with something. And then we have an opportunity to recognize like, oh, this is delusion again. This is ego, ego again. And it has to happen in so many different angles and ways. And that's why I say it's like, we're constantly going through the grinder or mulcher. Now, that doesn't mean that, that there's gonna be suffering all the time. You're not gonna, at the beginning, on some, in some level, certain stage, yeah, there has to be some suffering because we're literally going from, the play is like this. If we can see all the lifetimes, it would make sense. But when, when we just look at this one, it's, it's just too narrow. It's like the stage is to completely, and you can see these, this and demonstrate in a lot of people, just go out to some party town or something where the life force is like totally believing in the 3D world. It's all about sense pleasure. It's like 100%. So then when Grace says, okay, it's time to uh, like start to wake up and then this starts to reverse, it's like there's going to be some suffering because you're literally going like <clears throat> from like 100 miles an hour to like reversing. It's like, whoa, that friction of like the consciousness, um, the life force being reversed, that's gonna cause some pain and suffering. That's just part of the deal. So life will continue to administer and prescribe though, certain situations that will continuously test our realization. And there's gonna be a sense of pain. That's authentic though. That's authentic pain, that kind of pain. Growing pain's authentic. Much more authentic than the spiritual foo-foos with their superficial peace, love and light, I love you everybody, I love everybody, blah, blah, blah. It, there's a hollowness about that. There's not depth. How can you tell though? See, this is the thing. You can't tell them that. Like, don't you see, like, there's no depth. It's like coming from some <clears throat> superficial part of yourself. Like, do you see that? No, how are they gonna see it? Well, how can you see it? You gotta be in touch with your depth. How do you get in touch with your depth? <clears throat> By going through the cosmic mulcher. You see, because it keeps driving you more deep, more deep, more deep. Because it's like, like life's going to show you wherever there's identity. It's going to show you where, where, where's the conditioning? Where's the identity that I'm holding on to? And then you're going to have an opportunity to see through that and transcend that. Hence, go through the cosmic grinder, mulcher. It keeps, it keeps just popping out 
any ego identity or conditioning there is. That's what drives you deep. You, you get to where you got to hit the core. You get, you get core level. You get to where you can't be grinded anymore. You, you're like squeezed like a sponge, man. Like, like all the hidden karma that so many people have and don't know it, all that hidden karma came up. There's no, you've hit bottom. The show goes on, you still, you still get tested and you still go through things and you can still make mistakes, like who cares? But you've, you've, there's nothing else hiding in you anymore. Desires, attachments, you know, uh, subconscious, superficial identities that you're holding on to. I'm spiritual, I'm so spiritual. All that stuff, you're, you're, your self-introspection has become so laser sharp that you look at everything. You look at everything. That's evolution though. You can't just make a choice, say, okay, I'm gonna look at everything. Because you can feel, you can feel. Some people can feel, they're like, man, I just, I can feel there's something there, but I can't go there. It's like something won't let me go there. It's like blocked, it's, it's Thomas. Something blocks it. You're like, you just can't go there. <laughs> Because it's not time. Sometimes people ask, you know, like, what's my, like, do I have karma here? You know, do, what's my karma? What's my, what's my destiny here? See, when you hit core, you can sense that stuff. Because some people ask me, well, how do you know? Because I, I, it's never been in my cards, my karma to, or destiny to get married and have kids. It just never, it just wasn't there. And so then sometimes people ask me, they're like, how do you know though, man? Maybe if you meet the right one. I said, man, they've been telling me that since I was a teenager. It's not about that. It's not about meeting the right one. I've met the right one like three and a half times. Really good ones. That's why I'm satisfied now. I don't, I don't, I don't need the experience again. Am I running from it? Oh no, a girl. No, they're, they're cool. I can have the experience again, but there's no, I'm not pursuing it. I like, I don't, I don't have a desire for it anymore. But if it happens, yeah, thank you, God. This is fun. I like it. But I could sense, I could sense, like, it's just not in my destiny to do that. It's just not. It's like, uh, yeah, how are you going to explain it? I mean, you can just feel inside, like, what your karma is or what your destiny is. Now, you don't know exact. can't say exact. But you, it's a tendency. It's, the karma and destiny is like hiding on subconscious level. Subconscious operates via tendencies. You can feel the tendency. It's a, it's an energetic kind of just, you know, tendency. <laughs> At the same time, I'm not like naive and I don't get complacent. And I say, look, if the universe wants me to, let's say, get married and have a kid, okay. If that's the real destiny, like, but it won't be because there's any human personal desire on my part to do that. That's what I'm trying to say. I don't have that karma. It would, it would be because the universe wants us to do that for some higher, greater reason. For example, you know, all right, I gotta look at my, my bullet points. Yeah, so we hit this core level. <clears throat> That's my definition of being like reborn. We hit this, you can't go any deeper within the human construct self. So then, then, so that's like first, the first stage, who knows how long it takes to, 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 for this whole process to happen. But if you're resonating with these videos, well then you're, you're doing, you know, you're doing pretty good. So don't worry about it. Um, how many lifetimes do I have left and all that stuff. First stage is that it's like all this karma gets uprooted. It takes a while. It's like the, there's there's people that uh, this, this is why Osho said uh, that the rich people actually have a better chance to become an awake than the poor people because the poor people have a lot of desires still in their mind. What is it like to be rich and what? Is, but but it's like dormant though. They're not even really thinking about it because they're not in a situation where it makes sense to think about it. They're like, it's not even a possibility. 
That's an example, I'm glad that came to me. That's an example of dormant karma or desires that you don't even know you have. Certain situations, life situations will bring that up. And then you'll realize like, oh, like I was in America before I left. I left when I was like 25. I thought I could just be celibate effortlessly. I was like, this is easy. I was living in LA. I mean, I didn't, yeah, the girls there were like crazy, generally speaking. I'm like, I don't need to take a vow. Like, I'm just like, I don't want to, yeah, I don't want to get involved. Not interested. I go to Brazil, whoa, whoa, I like realized I like girls a lot. <laughs> they were super, I, I went to a village and they were super feminine and, and, and if they liked you, they just showed you. They just like, hey, I like you. They weren't, no, no games, no like, okay, I'm gonna pretend this or, or I'm gonna size you up. No, it was just like, I like you. I'm like, I like you too, like a lot. So, that was an example of dormant karma. The same thing when I went to India. <clears throat> Man, they're so innocent there. <laughs> I was in a, they call it a tuk-tuk, a rickshaw. And uh, there were like four girls, like high school or college or something. I was like 27. And I'd, man, I'd, so there was just, I liked that stuff. <laughs> and um, I was sitting there and they were like really shy. You know, they're they're like, you know, just really shy, but they were trying to play it off. But they're so innocent that they can't play it off because they just don't know how to do that, you know? And then I remember one happened to look at me and then I smiled. And the way she reacted was so like cute. You could, she was just like, it was just so, and then her friend, you know, and it was just, yeah, really good energy, actually. So, that's why I made my other channel Beyond the Alchemy because I understand about, I would call that edging. If you do it too much, you see, I got addicted to that attention. Call that edging. Getting dopamine hits, getting validation from the opposite sex. See, that's, that's, a, that's a huge addiction that a lot of people have and don't even know it. They just think it's normal. Oh, I'm a guy. And yeah, okay. It'll rat out your nervous system after a while. I mean, how, how can you have an effective spiritual practice when your mind's on that all the time? Like, I had no idea how fettered I was, not free, until I started to become free of uh, <clears throat> just this whole play between male, female energy and edging. I was like, no wonder I, my spiritual practice couldn't be efficient. I mean, Jesus, like, how could it? It's like every decision I made or every, any time I went anywhere, that was there somewhere. Like, like, is she, who do I, who am I interested in? Okay, is she interested in me? Like, it was such an automatic program, I didn't even know about it. I don't know. Am I digressing? I don't think so. I don't. But I, I, I lose my place sometimes, so then I have to, I have to see what we're supposed to see. Okay, yeah, but, but <laughs> the last thing I wanted to touch on was about being, uh, <clears throat> being reborn. Ah, but I forgot my, my story about superficial. You see, the superficial spirituality, they haven't hit the core. They still have karma, man, that they're not even aware of. It, it's like these tantra gr groups. <laughs> I remember this guy I was hanging out with. He, I saw a picture of him in one. I'm like, okay. So they, uh, they're a bunch of horny people but they can't admit it. So the, the mind justifies it. It's like, let's, how can we spiritualize this away and make it look spiritual? Ah, let's do a tantric <coughs> group and we're just exchanging energy. And you know, it's the goddess and the, and the God and oh, we're like exchanging energy. And yeah, I'm not horny, no, I just exchanging energy. Yeah. So um, it takes a while to really start to, get the level of self-honesty where you can call yourself out okay so this is story <clears throat> i was in this other town and um i don't know a guy in his 20s or something and you'd always see him he'd be he'd be like <laughs> he would do this in the middle of town though yeah okay so that's a that's a that's a, a sign right there and he'd just he'd sit on the bench and he'd just show everybody's meditating like they're meditating you know who's looking you know meditating and um 
wear wore all the clothes and everything when you you know <clears throat> when you meet them you know hey no, no, namaste namaste yeah. okay and um you know what happened like this is a good story see this is a positive story it may sound like it's not when i finish but it is then all of a sudden i seen him and he's like uh smoking weed <laughs> and he's outside the club you know and, and trying to mac and uh and then he saw me i'm like hey what's up man and he just felt the need to just uh i didn't even ask anything but but i'm glad he shared it with me he's like um it's like bro man i got i i'm paraphrasing i have i just had to let up like all this stuff's in me i gotta get it out like i gotta get this stuff out and then i'll come back and do the spiritual practice i'm like right on man totally i get it because that's what i did that, that there was no other way i mean otherwise you just you're just weird there's this inner conflict and contradiction inside that you're pretending it's not there but it's there that's what i mean by superficial uh, spirituality that so when you go through all that karma you hit your core then there's some kind of rebirth and then still things come up to be grinded but you've already hit the core it's like you you're you're onto it now you're not hiding you're not you know you're not uh, lying to yourself anymore you're just like okay bring it whatever you're you're present that's what i'm saying you're present you've done the work now you're present so now the bullets bullets come but you you know you're present you don't have a bunch of you know you're not unconscious as much <laughs> you're always going to be unconscious on some level because the consciousness is sleeping on some level although because we're in this body it, it has to be asleep a little bit for this body to exist all right good i think i said enough 17 minutes i'll talk to you soon